All right. Does it say it's recording? I got your permission. Yeah. All right. That is key. So first, I think we're going to start. Um, mm -hmm. This is for my podcast for Off the Record. You guys know, well, you guys know Off the Record? I do. Hey. Do you? I, I haven't heard the episode yet. Are you serious? But I will. I will. You don't have to. I'm just asking. Just I got because I gotta I gotta pit myself out. So, <laughs> but we start with um just a little bit. So uh -oh. I wanted to know both from both of you, just like your name, your age, and your interests. Like anything you want to say about yourself. Let's start. Comfortable. No, you don't. You can start. Oh, I feel like I gotta go first. You're older. Um. Oh boy. Okay. My name is Gracia, and I am 28 years old. I have an amazing cat named Lily, and I love her so much, and I'm gay. There you go. Hi, Steven. Uh, I'm Steven Hernandez. I'm 18 years old. Um, I have an even more amazing cat, Yuri. No, you don't. Um, Cat people. <laughs> uh, I recently graduated high school. Um, now I work full time at a factory. Um, and yeah, that that's about it. All right, cool. So you both live. Where do you guys live now? Painesville, Ohio. Painesville, Ohio. Um, My bad. Kitty. Oh, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> <I'm used to it. laughs> All right. So first I wanted to, um, I guess I'll start with like, Steven, I wanted to ask you a bit about your style, your fashion. Okay. Um, so I really like, I've seen your pictures on Instagram um, and I think they're really cool. I think your style of clothing is, I love it. So that's good. So what do you think about style of fashion? What do you consider? Could you repeat that? What do you call your, What do you call that style of fashion? What do you consider your inspiration for your style mm. and clothing? That's an interesting question. Um, I don't know. I guess. Um. Are you a boy? I, 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 Are you emo? Almost. Almost. almost? Uh, I, I say. It's more e boy than anything. Uh, yeah, but okay. I guess yeah, sure, we'll call Sorry, it. What's an e boy? Or, like I really don't know. Like what's for, and for people who don't know, what's an e boy? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. Um, kind of, it's kind of like the new emo. I guess, but um, for it's mainly for like TikTokers, but uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't post TikToks, not yet. It's, so it's got a history in TikTok. It started in TikTok. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Or it got popular uh, through TikTok. Just cat. Okay. Why do you feel about? Okay, so wait a minute. And it's just, you said it's a newer version of emo. What do you mean by that? Yeah, pretty much. Um, Like the, like the, all, like the all black, the, the chains, jewelry, um, stuff like that. What um, kind of expression do you think that's supposed to represent? Like how, how do you feel that express who you are? This type of, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I just, it's, I just like, I just like the style. Um, yeah. So, all right. You can like relate to it in some way, right? Um. I, I guess. I guess, yeah. Like, do a lot of kids when you were in high school, or a lot of your friends, do they dress that type of style, or is that like something a lot of people are doing nowadays, or do you consider it unique? Um, 
I think there's there's a decent amount of people who have the same style, who have that style. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's a minority, I guess. Yeah. How does that relate back to like your interests and stuff like that? Is that a type of community? You know how like there were the emos, the goth kids, and then there's the punk rock, the all that. Is that a type of community you think we meet? Um, not as much. I don't. Um, but I, I guess if, if you're more um, involved in TikTok, then yeah. I guess it's uh, more tightly knit. Okay. Now, how you feel? Um, now, I just kind of want to bring this back to both of y'all. Because it's that, okay. Okay, I had like some pre-made questions. Hold on. And so, but you made me think a lot um, just now, and I just wanted to ask this to you guys. But how do you guys feel about TikTok as a Wait, what? How do you guys feel about TikTok as a social platform to express yourselves? You know, you said you don't use it that much. Um, I don't. I don't post on it, but I watch a lot of TikToks. It's um, a rabbit it gets you stuck, right? <laughs> <laughs> I feel is a great platform for the youth because it's where all the young people be at and they spread anything they want, whether it's talking about their community um, or just dancing in general. And it's a great way and everybody just connects with each other, whether they like it or not. So I think it's good for the young people. That's cool. Do you, is there a lot of politics on TikTok? There's, is there a lot of people who talk about Hold on. It's, uh, let's see. Okay, I think that's it. Um, yeah, that was about healthcare workers. I guess since we had that emergency alert, I'm kind of going to go into that direction because that's where a lot of my questions now are going to go towards is more of what's happening in political. Um, so I wanted to know first, Steven and Gracia, what do you consider um, your, uh, 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 okay, pause, hold on. I got to find this. Sorry. Um, I guess the biggest way to say is what do you think about the current state of affairs as far as, I know... Ohio has is a lot of everybody's pretty much shut down. Like the United States, the rest of the shut down in a way. What do you think about the current state of it? So how does this make you feel? And what do you think is the direction we're heading in? And yeah, that's it. Uh, oh no! Way. They asking, they seeking healthcare workers because they say, I guess we're running out. Oh shoot, I was supposed to be recording this part. Okay, I'll take it from here. Repeat your question, louder. What do you think about the current state of affairs that the world is that politics are in right now? You wanna go first? I don't know whether you just question. Oh my god. Like what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying like okay. For example, let's start with um we're currently this year, this year is twenty twenty, November twenty twenty. This is a big political year. We're about to go to the election polls. Well I think Ohio's already been. Can you tell me more about your experience? Because I think Ohio into the were able to get their ballots in before all of this went down. Well, 
Well, I think they should just postpone the whole election in general because there's a lot of states that weren't able to vote. Ohio was had that privilege to have that, that early ballot opening. So I don't think it's fair to have an election in November when everything was closed down when it was supposed to be voting time. And then in the end, it's going to be way too rushed. And of course, the voting system is already messed up in general. So, and that's with regular time. Imagine with limited time, yeah. how will we be able to trust the votes that it was official? So I think that it should just be pro- postponed or at least have a, dis- a different type of system to have the, the people vote like indoors or something instead of and also without them going outside at risk of the coronavirus and with with the coronavirus since it's um since uh, uh older people are at a greater risk um they're less likely to go out and vote um if voting is still being held um so i I think the i think that would um drastically change the um the the final results because older people because uh the different age groups tend to have similar political um um, ideologies mm-hmm. and opinions. So, if one group is at a greater risk and they don't go out and vote, then that changes the the results drastically. Yeah. So I know that a lot of the speaking on that, like the polls four years ago, showed that generation actually vote like the way they're supposed to and the like it showed in like the results how do you what do you think well you were now with the situation with the coronavirus like the older population may not go out to vote it's still a vote how do you think this situation is going to the demographic the way people um, the way the results pretty much if the 20 elections go as planned. You think the younger people are gonna take over? Um, okay. Um, so, I think there's a lot of older um, conservatives mm-hmm. and there are young conservatives um so with less elderly going out to vote and um with them being less likely to vote um um online or however else Mm -hmm. um the younger people who are still willing to go out and vote or find another method to vote um, are gonna, I think, sway in favor, sway, sway the election or the polls in favor of um, the Democrats like Joe Biden or Bernie. Um, who aren't conservative like Trump. Yeah, this is a great opportunity. I think this is the right time for the younger people to step up and actually speak out their mind when it comes to voting. Because this is the opportunity now. Now that the elderly are inside and with everything going on, they their voices should be heard more now than ever. Mm-hmm. Especially for another four years, I think it's time. It, especially with uh, them not liking the way things are going right now, they should just it should lean for the, the the younger people. 
So I know. Hold on. Yeah, I can hear this. Sorry, I'm doing this. I got to record, so I just want to hear this. Ooh. Make sure I'm getting all my audio. Um. Okay, so you just said that this is like now that the elderly aren't going outside anymore. Um, and that... Yeti. Oh, boy. And that this is um, the opportunity for the youth to kind of go out and have their voices heard. But we're currently in a situation where we're in an epidemic and they're saying, you know, people can't go outside. People can't go to the store. Like stores are shut down. Even if you're still going outside, the stores are shut down. Um, what do you think is it like, where do you think we're headed in this current state of democracy? How are voices going to still continue to be heard? when they're pretty much forcing everyone to go back home, go back inside. First of all, do you think they that's legit? Do you think they have legitimacy behind that to tell people they can't go these places? They haven't really, I don't know how Ohio is, if y'all wanna elaborate on that. But I know in New York, we, some police have started showing out on the street and just standing around. They haven't necessarily enforced that we're not supposed to be out yet, but there's a curfew now that they're trying to put in effect for eight o'clock. Um, they're just like posted out in the street. And I guess if they see you in a group, they automatically kind of, but you know how New York is like, I've been out at midnight and people are still out. People are still moving, but how long before that changes? So what do you guys think in that situation? What, what's kind of the next step? Well, not the next step, but just what do you think? I just want to hear what you think. Well, explain how Ohio is, because you've been going outside more. Um, so in Ohio right now, um, a lot of a lot of places are shut down, like in most of the U.S. I think. Um, but we're still able. The parks are still open. We're still able to go outside. We just can't be in large groups. Um, I don't know how they enforce that, or if they enforce that, um, um, but um, it's just, we're still able to go outside, and um, there aren't any cops out the outside standing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as if they like, there aren't any cops outside. So I think the people are taking it a bit serious and they're actually staying inside. Well, I know Ohio was one of the first, I think the first, <laughs> the first state to shut down pretty much to say like, you know, okay, we're closing out, travel in and out. Um, so have you guys seen much of the effects of coronavirus? Have you, do you think it's something that's a big, uh, I mean, it is a big issue, but do you think it's something that started to affect your life? Like, are you seeing it get closer and closer, or is, does it just still seem like something they talk about on TV? Um, I think that um, it's starting, it, the things are starting to change. It, it feels different, the atmosphere is different, the, um, just the general mood um because even though we're still able to go outside there's pretty much nothing open or the stores that are open um they don't have much um you're everyone's keeping a distance um you cough now you get looked at the wrong way um the the whole atmosphere is just changing but i don't think it's uh drastic yeah you don't think what i don't think it's that drastic it is it's hard to to feel it here, because the numbers aren't as high as, like you say, New York. Yes, the people 
are doing their thing, they're doing the social distance and the things are closed, but we're not seeing like anything here. Like we hear it, but we don't see it. So it's hard to believe that it's that drastic, especially living in Ohio. I, I, I would believe it's a bit different living in New York, seeing people act differently from Ohio. But personally, it's hard to believe living in Ohio because the numbers are low, cases are low. There's The police aren't out there. Not It's just a bit changed, but it's still hard to believe the numbers. So have you, um, just to get a little bit more personal, have you heard of anybody close to you that's suffered from the coronavirus or is it still just probably hard to in Ohio, right? Or have you heard of anyone outside, family outside of the state? Well, I've heard outside of the state, like my brother-in-law's cousins both have coronavirus, but that's outside the state. Mm -hmm. Again, it, it doesn't affect us in Ohio yet, but I've heard people outside the state, which it's, it's hard, like I said, it's hard to believe because we have yet to face anything like that. So it feels like it's getting close, but at, at the same time, it's still far from Ohio. So I think, okay, cool. So to get off of that topic, like, well, not to get off that topic, but to go back to where we originally started from, how do you think this current state of democracy, because things are not going to be the same, um, the way we do things now, you can see there's a lot of online life going on now. There's been workers now, you see how important workers are to like the everyday $15 worker, you see how important they are to society now, even though they have a whole lot less of the power. And you see how it kind of relates back to pretty much how we distribute our power and most like mostly in the United States, but you can see it around the world. What do you guys think can be the next step to how we make sure a situation like this doesn't happen again or how we feel things need to change as far as the way our democracy is and the way pretty much people are treated. I think the coronavirus is a big wake up call for Americans. I think going through this a lot of people are going to realize um that things need to be changed mm -hmm. and <clears throat> i think people are gonna see that um a a uh, Bernie Sanders um, administration um, would be the the next step um, with a uh, fifteen dollar minimum wage, living wage, um, universal health care, Medicare for all. Uh, Stephen, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. It's just the audio started messing up. Can you check again? Hello? Is it good? I don't know. It's like now the audio is getting grungy. I'm just trying to make sure I catch what you say. Um, hold on. All right. So we about to, um, we getting into real shit. So I'm about to see how this recording is and make sure that we can keep recording from here just to make sure that everything's, and that way we can do the audio check. All right. Give me one second.